Hey guys and girls, I hope everyone is having a spectacular Sunday afternoon. Look at this here in Oklahoma. Will you look at this? I've got long sleeve shirt on that I wore to church this morning, but I could be out here in short sleeves and be just very comfortable. Not really a breath of wind. There's a little wind that comes up and blows every now and then, but mostly it's just dead, dead slick. This morning when uh, Chris and I got up and got ready to go to church, it was just absolutely, it was just absolutely so slick out here that it's like a mirror. It's just like a mirror. And a beautiful day. This is the first of a, a, probably a, about a couple of weeks of really nice weather. The 50s and the 60s, 65 degrees, which is absolutely fantastic for um, for January and February. I mean, the end of January, early February, you know, here we are uh, ending, ending January in a couple, two or three days. And, and the first eight or ten days into February, beautiful. I'm talking about really beautiful. I even got some rain forecast in there, which makes it a little prettier for a rancher like me to be down here in southern Oklahoma and have a little rain forecast. Got a little over two inches in January, which is uh, uh, a lot. You know, we got 1.4, I think, last year, and we had none the two years before that in January. So we're starting the year off really, really good. Um, did want to tell you about some personal appearances I got coming up. Sherry did not accept any personal appearances in January this year. We turned them all down because of her husband, Jack, having that knee operation. Three weeks ago tomorrow, he had that knee operation. He's still in a lot of pain, but he's doing good. He's doing good. And uh, so uh, she, we turned down all the personal appearances. But she had, does have me booked for the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, February 1st, 2nd, 3rd. That's this coming Thursday and Friday. I'll be at Grizz, Grizz, Grizzly Jigs. Grizzly Jigs, a big show up there with uh, one of my sponsors, um, for, uh, High Tech. High Tech uh, makes the Blaze Series rod and reels that we have. They make those great crappie poles, the long poles, 10, 12, 14-foot poles. They make our extendable pole that we use down here on the dock for Chris to catch crappie with, with one hand, her left hand, as it is, her left hand. But um, they, uh, the Blaze Series rod and reels uh, that, that I use, uh, particularly the Blaze Series rods, I use the spinning reels a lot, too. And uh, the spinning rod and reel combinations, are, we use those, uh, they sell for 79 bucks and they're a tremendous spinning rod combination, just tremendous. But uh, Ken Grawl, the owner of that company, will be there with me and I'll be there Thursday evening. I fly to Memphis and then drive up to Carothersville, Missouri for the Grizzly, Grizzly Jig Show. That's everything crappie. It's all about crappie. And uh, crappie, a bunch of other crappie people will be here, crappie guides, crappie tournament fishermen, guys that have won national championships. They'll be able to help you on your live scope situations. I'm sure there'll be sem seminars about that. I'll be there some Thursday evening. Uh, I fly to Memphis that morning and drive to Cr Crothersville. Uh, I'll be there also Friday until about noon, I believe, Friday morning until about noon. So if you get a chance to come to that Grizzly Jig Show in Crothersville, Missouri, little bitty town there, but it's just a great store. I mean, it really is. And uh, I'll be there working with, uh, like I said, High Tech, uh, who makes our Blaze Series, Jimmy Houston, Oliver, Jimmy Houston, Rod and Reel, and uh, Rod Combos, Crappie Fish Combos, Long Pole Combos, all of that, which are just really tremendous outfits, tremendous outfits. Uh, also, I will then, I'm going to leave there, drive back to uh, Memphis, fly to Knoxville, Tennessee. I'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee, Saturday morning, Saturday morning at First Baptist Church, Concord, Tennessee, just outside of Knoxville there. First Baptist Concord. And to get tickets to that, that's a men's conference. It's both Friday and Saturday. To get tickets, you go to 865men.com. 865men.com to get tickets for that. Two-day deal. I'll only be there one day. They, they wanted me to come in there on Friday night, but, but I, there's no way I can make it in there because of the, uh, the, the show up there in Missouri. But... Uh, but I'll be there on Saturday morning. I'll be speaking on Saturday morning. They've got a lot of other great speakers. Great speakers in there for Friday and Saturday. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not this keynote speaker of that. I'm just going to get to speak and meet everybody and visit with everybody and, and have a really great time. I think the conference is over on about noon on Saturday. I'm not positive about that. But you can go to 865men.com, learn a little bit more about that conference, learn all the various speakers there. They'll have incredibly great music. I think breakfast is included in that. Uh, uh, some sort of a, probably just carry out breakfast, maybe cereal and juice and stuff like that. I'm sure it's not a big deal with biscuits and gravy and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure. It might be. It might be. It's a Baptist church. Baptist church have great, great uh, situations like that. I know that for sure. But we've had a, we've had a tough week here at the Eagle, obviously. Um, uh, you know, I did a video talking about uh, losing my great friend Steve Wells. Uh, that funeral is tomorrow in Oklahoma City. Chris and I will be leaving here at the ranch here in the morning about 7 o'clock or 7.30 going up to Oklahoma City for that funeral. 
Uh, some of you mistakenly thought he was a business partner. He's a partner in ranch here. He owns half of this ranch and uh, his family owns half of this ranch. And uh, we got a nice size ranch. I couldn't afford all of it, uh, but I can afford half of it with a partner. And, and so it's been a great partnership. Uh, many, many years we've been together and we've never had a single crossword at all he, because he's a good man. He's a good man. Um, uh, integrity, a good Christian man. As a matter of fact, uh, he asked for, his family asked for, instead of flowers at the funeral, to send uh, uh, donations to uh, his favorite charity, which is was uh, 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 RFC, RFC, I think, uh, Racers for Christ, Racers for Christ. That was his favorite charity. So that'll tell you what kind of man that, that, that Steve Wells is. And uh, he fell on the ice, slipped on the ice Sunday night during that big ice storm we had and uh, hit his head and never recovered from that. So it's... Uh, I'm just uh, still at a little bit of a loss. He was a great friend as well as a, a partner here in the ranch. And uh, pretty much whatever he wanted to do, I agreed with. Pretty much whatever I wanted to do here at the ranch, he agreed with. And we just, uh, that's kind of the way that partnership were, we, was. We were friends and he loved to fish. He loved to hunt. Great family, great Christian family, uh, son and daughter, grandkids. Uh, uh, Aaron's boys, his son, uh, grandkids, they, they, they raced, they were drag raced just like their dad Aaron did. And uh, they had these little like uh, Big Daddy uh, Don Garlitz racers, those long, but they were kid models and, and they were great. They, they won a lot of races and uh, Kenzie, uh, his granddaughter was, uh, uh, she's just about as good as anybody. I mean, uh, girls are good drag racers as well. We've got some on the shell drag racing team as a matter of fact. and. Uh, but uh but so it's been kind of a kind of a strange week because of that every time i walk around any place and look around i, I couldn't help but think of steve all, all of the time and the great time that he had down here with his family uh with his kids with his grandkids the great time he had out there fishing um and um and he's we're going to miss him a lot we're going to miss him a lot obviously his family's going to miss him every day thankfully both kids and all the grandkids live in oklahoma city close to becky and so they're going to be a Huge comfort to her, there's no doubt about that. But uh, other than that, we had a good week here at the ranch. Uh, that ice storm was Sunday night, electricity went off and um, the, uh, my generator run about five minutes. <laughs> my Generac generator run about five minutes, then it quit and I couldn't ever get it back on. And I tried to talk to somebody at Hunter Heat and Air and uh, nobody would talk to me. They had an answering service and uh, I pay a monthly subscription I have for about 15 or 20 years. Uh, where they're supposed to come and fix your problems daytime or nighttime. And they told me they changed that back a couple, two or three years ago, and they don't do that anymore. And uh, they didn't bother to tell us they didn't do it anymore. And if I could have just talked to somebody and they could have told me how to reset the code and could have started that thing manually and, and we'd had power, our power was off uh, from about eight, eight, about five minutes after eight <laughs> until uh, about one o'clock where OG&E, and OG &E, bless her heart. I mean, they, they get out and no tell them what, every kind of weather, it doesn't matter. Tornadoes, ice storms, snow storms, and, and get people's power back on. Uh, power come on across the, the road, my, my, my buddy's ranch across the road, uh, about 11 o'clock, they told us this morning at church. And so we were on a couple hours after that. In fact, I think they thought ours might've been on and og &E actually came out here and, and came onto our property in the middle of the night in the middle of the ice storm. And uh, well, then we may have had something down, they didn't tell me, but our, our power came back on at one o'clock. So uh, big thank you to, to og and &E and a big to uh, Hunter Heat and Air. <laughs> but that'll be the last time I'll be using the hunting, Hunter Heat and Air. We're gonna find somebody else. And, to take care of our heating and air conditioning. Somebody that will come out in the middle of the night or on Sunday afternoon or on 4th of July or, or, or Easter or whenever, come out and take care of you if your, your heat and air goes out. So, But other than that, it's, it's been a really good week here. Uh, Casper, uh, my white albino buck with his first antlers, he uh, got some kind of infection in his jaw. We, we really thought it might be like bazooka. We lost a big buck to that. And um, it could be lumpy jaw. If it's lumpy jaw, it's bad. There's not really hardly any way you can medicate that, I'm told. I actually talked to Cade, my uh, veterinarian here. Had a veterinarian on a property this week, and he, he said it kind of looked like lumpy jaw. He just looked at him through the fence, and he was a, uh, a really nice guy. He's a, a fossil hunter, a fossil hunter from up in Minnesota. He had a fossil 
hunting conference in Oklahoma City, and uh, and and so he called me and asked me if he'd come and fossil hunt, and I let him do that, and uh, he actually found some fossils and gave them to me. He brought me a gift. He brought me a fossil of a fish about this long, probably. It looked like about four inches long, and uh, and and uh, and on a, on a piece of, that he had found somewhere, and which is really a nice gift. He gave that to me as a gift, but he said it kind of looks like lumpy jaw. He said you can medicate them, medicate them, and and it doesn't help. It's a fungal uh, virus and uh, fungal infection. Cade told me the same thing at church this morning, and and they said they don't die from that. They usually die from the complications of it. Uh, but he might live. He's better today than he has been the last two or three days. It broke, uh, and it's not swelled up anymore, and it's draining and bled a little bit and drained. So he might be getting rid of it on his own. Let's hope. We uh, were able to save Prince Charming last year by medicating him from uh, blue tongue, and uh, hopefully the, that by not doing anything to... Um, to uh, Casper, he might he might make it through too. I sure hope he does. We've had a difficult time with the albino deer. They're just not nearly as tough or uh, as, uh, as as and, and, and being able to fight away disease and things as a regular white-tailed deer. But they sure are beautiful, and we sure would like to get a few more started here. We still have three. We have a Prince Charming and a doe, and hopefully quite a few deer that are bred to them. So we've got the albino genes working into our herd a, a, just a, just a little bit. Those of you that are fishing, uh, be careful of that ice. Uh, my buddy Red Berry told me they had somebody down there in Alabama that always goes fishing on January 1st. That um, is just a great way to start the year. I, I agree with that, that custom. Go, go fishing on January 1st to start every year off with a fishing trip. And uh, stepped out of his truck on the boat ramp uh, on the ice, slipped and fell, and they never found him till four or five hours later. And really, really cold, obviously, way below freezing. And they don't know if... Uh, he died from the fall, or he didn't know if he, he froze to death, but uh, be very careful on the ice. I saw um, some videos of lots of people sliding around on the ice, and some of most of the people were young. They don't have as far to fall. They're not as top-heavy as some of us older guys are. Some of us older guys are pretty top-heavy, as a matter of fact. But uh, yeah, I even saw my daughter showed me a, a video of my buddy Jason Christie, great, great tournament fisherman from Oklahoma, Jason Christie, and he was out sliding on the, on the ice and making a video, and and I said, hey, Jason ought to be smarter than that. And about that time, he took a big tumble and fell. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, he's a little bit younger than I. And, uh, and so, you know, I guess he can fall a little bit better. But be very careful on that ice. Uh, it's not anything to joke about, not anything to make fun about. It's, it's really, really dangerous. And now the wind's coming up. Now the wind just come up right now. I have slick calm out here, and I don't know... Um, I don't know if we get get so much wind noise. We're running the, running this video or not, but uh, but anyway, other than that, everything's going good. Uh, can't really think of a whole lot of other, else to, else to tell you. I did I did want to mention that uh, uh, a preacher preached this morning at church about church attendance, and he talked about talked about people said they can worship God out on the lake or out on the golf course or whatever, and 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 I guess you can. Uh, I worship God all day long, everywhere I am, no matter, so you can. But God's given us instruction to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We can't get what we get in church. We go to church. We go to church to be filled back up with God's Spirit. We go to church to, to hear the Word. We go to church to worship and praise God. And we can worship and praise God at, everywhere we are. But uh, but if, if, if you're not involved in a, lo in a local church, uh, it takes some effort. It takes some, uh, some work to get back involved in church, no doubt about it. You got to get up on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday evening or whatever. And, uh, and you got to make an effort to go get the kids ready, get the wife ready, get everything, go to church, get there on time. And uh, it, it makes, it's no effort at all to just say, I don't want to go to church this Sunday. So just encourage everyone, if you're not involved in a local church, you're missing out on a big part of what God has created for your life. You missed out on a, a really big part on it. So, uh, so, so, so go, 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 go to church. I mean, uh, I've been, you know, I was raised in church. I, like I said, I was a drug kid. My mom and dad drug me to church every time the church doors open. And, and, uh, but, um, uh, you need to go to church. You need to go to church, praise God. And so many things will happen that changes your life. Plus the fact that you are with other Christians. You can uh, rejoice with them when uh, they're rejoicing. You can, you can hurt with them when they're hurting. You can pray with them when they need it. And can I tell you, we all need prayers every day. I need to be prayed for every day. And thankfully, many of y'all are praying for me every day. You're praying for Chris probably way more than me. And, but she needs prayers a lot. And uh, we appreciate that. And we're almost 34 months into since she's had her stroke. And without y'all's prayers, she wouldn't be here. I, I have no doubt about that. I, 
I, my prayers alone wouldn't have done it. Wouldn't have done it. You all have done it. Now my family's done it. My church family. Uh, my, 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 my personal family. You know, it's, it's the reason. It's the reason that, that she's still here. Not only that, she's better and she's getting closer to walking all the time. Hopefully she'll be walking sometime soon. So, uh, guys and girls, go out there and have you a good week this week. Remember, whatever has happened in your life this week, don't let that steal your joy. Don't let that steal your peace. If you're a saved, born-again Christian, you have a joy, you have a peace that comes directly from God. The devil's going to be trying to take that away. He's going to be throwing a lot of little things up in your face. Going to let somebody say something bad about you. Let something happen bad in traffic. Your order takes for long, ever for the Sonic like it did today for us when we stopped at Sonic to get a burger. And Chris did order a chicken sandwich, and they, I guess they had to go catch that chicken or find it dead laying on the side of the road. I don't know, but it took forever, but we still was really nice to the girl that brought it out and gave her a nice tip. And and so um, whatever circumstance happens to you that's a challenging or is thrown at you from the devil, the devil's after you if you're a saved, born-again Christian. Uh, don't let that steal your joy. Don't let that steal your joy. When that starts happening, just turn right around, give that problem to God, start rejoicing in the Lord. As uh, Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice over the fact that your order's not there and you've been there 20 minutes at a Sonic. Well, Sonic, service with the speed of sound. Service was good, it was fast. They, they took our order fast, they just bring it, didn't bring it for a while. But uh, but 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 just, just golly, just, uh, uh, just don't let those circumstances control you. You control your attitude for the day. And you and God make a majority in every situation that you might be in. I apologize for that wind coming up and blowing. It was slick as glass when I looked down here and come down here to do this afternoon talk. But guys and girls, if you get a chance to get over to Grizzly Jigs on Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, I'm looking forward to meeting you, seeing you, getting a picture taken, whatever you want done, and answering any questions. And uh, uh, if you're over there anywhere around Knoxville, Tennessee, that men's conference is going to be smash up dynamite is what I'm told. And uh, I'll be speaking there on Saturday morning. Uh, the conference is both Friday and Saturday, 865men.com. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. And remember, I sure do love you.